hello welcome and i'm very sure most of you know this guy so this is felix chitaka and he built the first luganda voice assistant at least that's how uh, he puts it very clear on his video that has been uh, of recent trending all over the place uh, if you go uh, on linkedin uh, it was having really really a uh, lot of traction as well as on tiktok it was having a lot of traction still on TikTok, and this was really good. And I went ahead and I watched the video, and you know, uh, he was speaking uh, and interacting, conversing with the uh, the voice assistant that was actually conversing in Uganda, and he was asking it uh, a number of questions, and it was uh, quietly answering them very nicely. And he said that he built this uh, within one month. So um, I didn't at first take it serious. Then uh, as I was at work, like conversing with some of my students, who were like, yeah, that was really nice. And I felt like, okay, I should have been the one who have built this uh, voice assistant because I've been having uh, working with AI quite a bit of time. And I was like, why didn't I think of that? Like Uganda GPT. And I want to really thank uh, Felix for coming up with this and it was a really nice uh, nice piece of work and I like it and uh, I said okay I want to see how long it could take me to build this and because he said it took him about one month and I was like I think that is too much you know a lot of time uh, not to say that he didn't do a lot of work he did a lot of work really to build that but I said um, quite frankly I can build this maybe in less than that time so I today morning at five, I woke up as I like, okay, I want to see how long it can take me to figure this out. So uh, by seven, I actually had a prototype working. So I want to show you what I built. And at the same time, I will show you how you can build the same application. And by the way, I'm called JB and I'm the founder of Desis Hub. And at this hub, we train and we also build uh, web applications. I also have a YouTube channel where I teach programming from scratch. You can just learn all these things uh, for free. And I will also put this video probably on the YouTube. And also, I have another, you know, AI content that I've created uh, in the past. So let's just like, show you what I managed to create. Uh, you can see it has this button which says start conversation. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, click it and so that you can start conversing with the uh, with the AI. What are the best places to visit in Uganda? Uganda erina ebifo ebirungi ebiabyo bulambusi. Wano wariwo ebimukubifo ebisinda obulungi. Bwindi impenetrable national park. Lino di somerolie solo nene omuri enyo gorilla. Murchison Falls National Park. Wano wewa sanga amazi gamatonko gamanyi, aga kiriza ne kiwaririzo ekinene, na bisolo ebiravika, nga embata, ingoya ne nyonyeze njaulo. Queen Elizabeth National Park. Eno ekulaga ebisolo bingi nga nene, nzirinya emiti. Lake Victoria. Unyanja nene mu Africa. Oluosana okukola ebikolo ariyamazi, okuri okukwata mpira no kutambula mumato. Jinja, source of the Nile. Wano osobola okundaga amazi. Okay, so you get the point. Um, so I went ahead and I built this, and uh, quite frankly, it was really nice. And uh, uh, when you build something like this, um, you really feel like y y there is a potential here. First of all, I took this as. Um, um, uh, you can build an app that can help, for instance, tourists who have just reached maybe on ANTV, they have just come to tour Uganda, and they can have this AI tour guide uh, who is like, uh, can tell them, this is how you get a taxi, and he's speaking in English, and then the translator is maybe responding both in Uganda and in English, just like trying to translate. Because like twice they be wanting to talk with locals, but they don't know how to speak some words. And I was looking at that, and quite frankly, it was really nice. And it has a room for improvement. 
But let me just show you how actually you can build this kind of application. I'm just going to be somehow very fast, but I'm just going to hope that you will just get some knowledge and you'll be able to, uh, to build this. So the first thing you need to actually you need is going to be um, this platform called LiveKit. So you just go here. I maybe just use another, I could just use another browser here because I'm already logged in in the other one. So I'm just going to say LiveKit. So the first thing is to go to this website called LiveKit.io and you grab yourself an account. So simply come here and click on try LiveKit. Okay. So this one, you're going to go ahead and use your Google account or you can use GitHub. So you can see here, you can just go ahead and use uh, Google or GitHub. Uh, any of the two is going to work. So after this, they will ask you to create a project. Okay, I'm not going to log in with any of these ones. I'm just going to simply go ahead and show you the logged in account. So when you log in, you will create an account and then you will also create a project. So you will just go to this page. They will take you to this page, which is uh, on AI agents here. And there are four ways or there are four things you can build with this. One, you can build a voice agent with SST, LLM, and TTS. You can build a speech-to-speech uh, -speech -speech agent uh, with this OpenAI real-time API. And then you can also build the one to answer incoming calls or make outgoing calls. That is how actually advanced these tools have gotten now with the AI. And for us developers, or the people are trying to get into tech, you can take advantage of this. So the easy one to implement here are these two. The first one is the voice agent with SST, uh, SST and LLM, uh, or speech to speech with AI agent. Actually, the easiest one here is this speech to speech. So if I right click here on speech to speech and you just go down here, they tell you open AI real time API quick start. So basically you can build using Python or you can use Node.js. So um, I'm just going to go ahead. I build more with Node.js and, and um, TypeScript a lot. So, but you can also follow the uh, quick start for Python, but I'm just going to show you the one for the Node.js. So if you just go down here, you simply actually for these, um, these steps here, you have to go ahead, you have already created an account with LiveKit Cloud. And the second one is to go ahead and install the LiveKit. So if you right click this and you go to this page here, you can see you can just go ahead and install on Windows using Winget. And just like this, and you also install, after installing this, uh, the LiveKit uh, CLI, you can also just go ahead and authenticate using this, the LOK Cloud Auth. Uh, this one, you also run it in your command prompt. So you just like say, for instance, CMD, and then you pull out your command prompt, and then you can just go ahead and run these, uh, these commands, okay? I'm not going to run them because I've already run them and I have everything running, but this is what you need. You don't need even to generate the token, simply just install here, and also just go ahead and run this LOK Cloud Auth. This is going to take you to a browser where you authenticate yourself. After that, go back to the guide. Remember, this was step number two. And now step number three is to build. So this is divided into two parts. One, it is running um, the server, which is going to be a Node.js. And then it has also the front end, this UI you are seeing here. This is a Next.js application. So, at the end of the day, what you're going to find out is that when you go to these steps, okay, um, when you just go to these steps, the first one is actually, you see here, you are creating a Node.js application. So you can see here, this is a Node. You are creating a Node.js application, which is going to be the server. And then after this, go ahead and install all the dependencies and simply run Node this. Now, uh, to be sincere, the application that is there, the default, I'm just going to show you what I managed to modify just a little bit. And then you can also go ahead. So you can see this is the backend, the Node.js application. Then after you also start the 
at the front end. So you're going to have two apps running. You're going to have this, the Node.js application, and you also have another application which is running uh, the, on the front end, on local 3000, and they are communicating through a background work server. So they have uh, on the back end of the Node.js, they start a worker which is going to work in the background and to be communicating with the front end uh, that you are going to build. And you simply just also go ahead and install the packages and start. And at the end of the day, you will have two applications. You can see I have two apps. The first one is Node.js. Okay, you can just see this one. This is Node.js uh, running on this, what you have, Agent TS. I modified this one. And then you also have this. Uh, the Next.js, so this one is a Next.js app router application. You can see this is running this one right now. Okay, so this is what it is actually right now doing. Uh, here, this is what it is uh, rendering. You don't need to actually modify anything in the Node.js application. You don't need to do anything here unless you want to move around and see what you can change. But there is nothing much you need to change in this. The all work is going to be done inside the uh, inside this Node.js application. So in the Node.js application, basically, uh, what you are doing here is Okay, this is the one that you are going to find there. You are going to find this. I named it weather.ts. This is the original agent. So what they are doing here, they are creating an agent that is going to be using uh, chat GPT behind the scenes, but is using a real-time uh, real uh, chat, like the way you'll be conversing in real time. And the live kit, what is giving us is that voice, the audio to be able to chat using voice. You can even chat with video. LiveKit can also give you video whereby you can show it, for instance, and say this is a pen, and it can identify that this is a pen, and you ask it, for instance, what can I use this pen for? And it will go ahead and, you know, tell you that this pen, you can use it for writing on ABC. So the LiveKit is so much important that it gives us that interface. So the only thing that I changed is if you look at this agent they created within here, they have this agent and you can see here that they give it here the instructions. So for instance, you are a helpful assistant and then they give it a function. So while the agents work, you give it a set of instructions and then you can also write custom functions that does particular things and then it can use those functions also to achieve some things. So what I did, I went ahead and modified this file and I created a Luganda uh, agent. So you can see here, I have this model, which is openai.realtime. So I give it an instruction. You are a helpful Ugandan tourist assistant who can communicate in both English and Uganda. Your role is to help tourists navigate Uganda, learn essential Uganda phrases, and understand local customs. When tourists ask questions, provide the English question and its Luganda translation, clear pronunciation guide, and everything. I went ahead and created the function. And if you look at this function, I just simply just went and I created a dictionary for Luganda with most common phrases that tourists might be interested in. So like all these, you can say have this file called lugandaguide.ts. And in this lugandaguide.ts, uh, I have here, for instance, things people can ask um, you can see at, uh, at Entebbe Airport, and then I have this. Where can I find a taxi to Kampala? And then there is here uh, the Luganda version and also the pronunciations. Okay, so I went ahead and created this for different things. For instance, accommodations uh, for national parks and food and restaurants, uh, cultural sites. For instance, you can ask it, um, to tell you about Kasubi tombs, the history of Kasubi tombs, and then to give you a via file via Kasubi tombs. And if you just go back here and you continue, down here I gave it also safety and emergency things. Like I gave it a lot of information. This document is about uh, 210, and you may ask that how did I generate all this information? You can actually just go on another AI, maybe cloud, I always use cloud here, 
And then I just told it that I want you to assume uh, you are a tourist who just landed on an entire airport and he wants a tour to tour Uganda. He wants a tour uh, to tour best hotels, national parks, and blah, blah. So I wanted to give it, I told it to generate for me 30 questions this tourist might want to ask and know about Uganda. And from that, I went ahead and modified so that I can have all this information available. That's how I did that. So I have this Luganda guide that my agent is going to be using this Luganda guide uh, in the background. So when you ask a question, it checks in the guide if there is that question, okay? Now, the fact that I'm using also OpenAI real-time, it can add in the information that was missing, okay? So that is using uh, this version, if you're using, um, if you just go back to this here, okay? So this is when you're using speech to speech. So if you just use this agent with SST, LLM, and this one, it is almost the same thing. The, as you can see here, user audio, and then it, it trans, uh, transcribes it into like a transcript, and then it will feed it to the LLM, that is large language model, and then it also generates a transcript, and then we get the, uh, the agent is going to speak out this audio, like you are trying to speak. And where we have this LLM, you can feed in your own information. And if you want to know more about, for instance, RAG, I have a video talking about that. Like if you just say, search my YouTube channel here, just in a second. And then if you just go on my YouTube channel, and now you can search here the word rag. And in this, I showed you how to build, uh, this is about three weeks, I build, I showed you how to build a rag-based uh, rag application. You understand why they actually, so that you can actually plug in your own functions. In this case, I use the function. You can say I use the function, but you can also plug in a rag, like, um, Retrieval augmented um, um, augmented uh, uh, generative. So this is retrieval augmented generative, whereby it can search in documents and do all those kind of nice things. So yeah, they, I wanted to break down this, but still I want to thank uh, Felix for the good work. And I think you're going to find this video very useful and helpful. And hopefully get you started 